Okay, so we're in 2020 now and wow, it's pretty crazy how fast time flies. But luckily we have progressed significantly in the past few years technology-wise and we've now started seeing those revolutionary foldable smartphones. This is where the future is heading towards and here's everything you need to know about the foldable phones of the past, the foldable phones of the present and of course, the foldable phones of tomorrow. To get 70% off of NordVPN and support the channel, simply use the link below or the coupon code ZOTNord. Okay, so starting off with how foldable phones appeared, Samsung, who's the world's leader in smartphone display technology, showed us the first foldable display prototype at CES in 2011. <laughs> yes, nine years ago. That was really the world's first glance at its foldable and flexible display technology. They showed us these extremely thin displays that you could bend in any shape or form you wanted. And just to give you guys an idea of how long ago this was, this was right when Samsung released the Galaxy S2. <laughs> Yes, the Galaxy S2, and that's also when we had foldable displays. Oh, and also, Samsung was actually working on these way before 2011. 2011 is when they actually showed those to the public. Anyway, after we've all seen this, we were expecting Samsung to release a foldable or a flexible phone, but they haven't really done that. At least not until many, many years further down the line. So in 2013, two years later, Samsung released this really interesting video that showed a concept of a foldable phone. A phone that you could open into a larger tablet and then close down into a smartphone form factor when you wanted something more portable. Fortunately, this was only a concept and not even a working prototype. And it would take us years until we actually saw an actual working unit of a foldable phone. Then in late 2013, Samsung released the Galaxy Round, which didn't have a foldable display, but it did at least feature Samsung's flexible display technology. Uh, so yeah, there we go. That was the world's first smartphone with a bended slash curved display. Then around the same time, we also got the LG G Flex, if you guys remember that, the phone with a healing back. But anyways, this phone, just like the Galaxy Round, also featured a curved display. Now, the reception to these phones was mixed. Some people were quite astonished to see such a revolutionary smartphone in terms of the design, while others were not so impressed, and the sales were honestly not that great either. But still, that didn't stop Samsung wanting to experiment more and more with these flexible displays and bendable displays, uh, while also working on their foldable screen technology. So in 2014, they actually released their first flagship smartphone with a curved display, the Galaxy Note Edge. And from the success of that, Samsung ended up releasing the Galaxy S6 Edge with the Galaxy S7 Edge a year later, and with the S8, they fully switched to only offering curved displays on all of their flagship smartphones. Okay, and that's all pretty cool, but what about actual foldable displays? Well, just around 2018, we also started hearing a lot of rumors that Samsung was working on their Galaxy X smartphone. We actually did quite a few videos on that. Um, yeah, a fully foldable phone, similar to what they showed us in that concept video from 2013. And in November 2018, Samsung even teased their upcoming foldable phone at their developers conference with a full reveal in February 2019. At CS 2019, we got the first actual foldable phone, the Royale FlexPi. Now, some of you may or may not have heard of this phone. It was overall a very disappointing device. As the UI was horrible, it was crazy laggy, but hey, it was at least the world's first foldable phone that actually worked. And shortly after the reveal event, Samsung sent a few review units of the Galaxy Fold, their foldable phone, to some reviewers. However, as some of you might be aware, the Galaxy Fold ended up breaking very, very easily. The display was made out of plastic as glass cannot fold without, you know, chattering, so it had to be plastic. And because of this, it was very susceptible to scratches, meaning that you could literally scratch this with your fingernail, and if any dust got underneath the display, which it could easily get into because of the faulty hinge design, well, it would basically hinder the whole display and the whole device useless. Samsung ended up pulling this phone entirely from the release, redesigning the phone and finally re-releasing it in September 2019. Okay, so that was the past of how foldable phones were introduced to the market. Yeah, there were definitely a few issues at launch, so here's where we are at now. So right now, in March 2020, there aren't that many foldable phones out there. So Samsung is still selling the Galaxy Fold, which is crazy expensive by the way, at $2,000 or 1,900 pounds in the UK. Uh, the Galaxy Fold was a decent start. The second iteration with the fixed hinge, that was much more durable. I haven't really seen any broken devices or any reports of broken devices because of dust or debris getting underneath the hinge. So uh, that one was pretty much fixed, but the Galaxy Fold still has a lot of issues. For example, it's extremely thick. 
The outer display is very small, it has a massive notch on the right hand side, it's not water or dust resistant, it doesn't have an end display fingerprint reader and the list can just go on and on and on. The main issue, even with the second generation, was still its durability. The inner display was still made out of plastic, meaning that you could still damage it with your fingernails, so yeah, great device, again, better than the first gen because of a hinge, but this was still a first gen slash prototype style device. Huawei also released their version of a foldable phone, the Huawei Mate X, uh, with a follow-up to it, the Huawei Mate XS, recently. This one actually folded on the outside rather than the inside, meaning that when folded you literally had half of the phone's display available to use, which was, which was awesome. Not only did the Mate X look much better than the Fold, but it was overall a much more futuristic approach to foldable phones. The only problem being that it also had a plastic display, just like the Galaxy Fold, but unlike the Fold, which actually protected the display by folding it on the inside, the Mate X had all that entire display exposed by folding on the outside. So the chances of the Mate X display being damaged are significantly higher than on the Fold. Now, aside from these two phones, we also started seeing a new foldable form factor in early 2020, and that was the vertically folding smartphones. Samsung released their Galaxy Z Flip, which was just this, a modern take on the old flip phone, and then Motorola released their brand new Razer, which itself was a reimagined version of the original Razer. Now, while the Razer still had the same plastic display that the Fold and the Huawei Mate X use, uh, the Z Flip was quite innovative. So it actually had a fully bendable glass layer, although this was indeed covered by a uh, sheet of plastic, which actually scratched as easily and broke the phone if you remove it. So that was a bit odd, but still the layer underneath that plastic uh, was indeed glass. So now that we know where foldable phones are today, where are they heading towards starting tomorrow? Well, we're almost at a point where foldable phones will indeed come with a full glass display, meaning that when this happens, they will be pretty much as durable as regular smartphones are today. I would say that this might just happen in 2021. Now, the Galaxy Fold 2, which is coming this year by the way, that one would still come with the same panel as the Galaxy Z Flip. Uh, which even though it, it, it does have glass on the inside, the outer layer is plastic, and that will indeed scratch and break very easily. Alongside this, foldable phones will be getting thinner and thinner and thinner with the outer display on foldable such as the Z Flip, the Razer, and also the Galaxy Fold getting larger and larger. One big part of how foldable phones work is indeed the hinge. I would say that aside from the durability of the display panel itself, uh, the durability of the hinge is the most important thing in a foldable phone, if not even the most important thing. We've seen how the second generation of the Fold improved the hinge design to make it way more durable. And then the Z Flip further improved on that by adding tiny fiber inside the hinge that would prevent dust and dirt from getting into the hinge. So those are two of the big improvements that we would start seeing in the next few months with every new foldable phone released. A more durable display and an improved hinge. Now, the third big thing that we'll see is just more and more manufacturers releasing foldable smartphones. We've already seen Xiaomi's foldable smartphone prototype, which looked quite impressive as it folded on the outside, but from both ends of the phone. So yeah, that was a very unique design. And we've seen so many reports and even patents from other companies such as LG, Microsoft, Google, and even Apple, all working on some upcoming foldable phones. Most of these big brands, especially Apple, won't be releasing a foldable phone in 2020. Uh, but aside from these big names, companies such as Oppo, Xiaomi, Vivo, TCL, and a few more tech companies from China, they will indeed give us some early insight at their upcoming foldable phones, likely by the end of 2020. Now, TCL, they're a display manufacturer and they're mostly known for their TVs and other appliances. Now, TCL actually demoed two versions of their own foldable phone. And I can tell you, they're very different compared to anything that we've seen so far. So the first one that they showed us was this triple folding phone, uh, which was very, very interesting. So you could use it in a smartphone form and then unfold it into a tablet that's twice as big. And then also you could unfold it further once more to have that tablet that's three times the size of the original phone. So yeah, that was really interesting. And you could also use the bottom bit as a stand. So I did really like this design. I think it was brilliant, but as you can probably tell, this thing was thick, as in really thick. Think of three or even four modern smartphones stacked on top of one another, um, and you, you basically get the idea. So yeah, this thing won't even fit in your pocket. However, as technology advances and smartphones will be getting thinner and thinner, a triple folding phone such as this one could be something that we could see in the next, I don't know, three to four years or so, or maybe just a tiny bit longer. Okay, and then they also showed us something that blew me away in a good way. 
So they showed us this, something that looks to be, you know, your usual modern smartphone. This one came with a 6.78 inch display, almost no bezels, and in display front facing camera cutouts. Uh, on the back we had a quad camera uh, module setup, so yeah, as you can see, this looks like a regular smartphone. So this was definitely not a foldable smartphone. But it turns out that this was actually a rollable smartphone. So half of the display was actually rolled on the inside of the phone and then you dragged out the right hand side in order to extend the display into a small tablet that was double the size of the original display. And wow, this is, this is literally the best approach when it comes to foldable phones. And that's because number one, the inner display, or at least half of it, is always protected on the inside of the phone. Then number two, unlike the Galaxy Fold, you can actually use this as a regular smartphone when in smartphone mode because it has that massive 6.78 inch display as opposed to the tiny 4.6 inch display and those massive bezels that the Galaxy Fold has when closed. And then finally, number three, as this phone doesn't actually fold, both the phone form and the tablet form have the exact same thickness, meaning that this is the world's first foldable phone, well, technically it doesn't really fold, uh, that's not extremely thick when used in smartphone form. And I really do think that this is the perfect way of making a foldable phone, or in this case, a smartphone that converts into a larger tablet. Personally, I don't really see the point in having just a regular smartphone that you could use in one hand anyways, that folds in half, just to make it a bit smaller, like the Galaxy Z Flip and the Moto Razr R. The truly useful foldable phones are the phones that can turn into a tablet when you need something with a larger display, and then turn back into a phone when you need something that's a bit more portable. Also, here's a fun fact, so it turns out that Samsung also demoed a rollable display back in 2016, yes, four years ago, which makes me think that Samsung has also thought of making a rollable display smartphone, but for some reason they decided not to, at least not up until this point. The Z Flip and even the Galaxy Fold itself, at that insanely high $2,000 price point, have both been very well received, interesting enough, so I'm confident that this will indeed be the big new trend in smartphones. Smartphones that we will start seeing more and more in 2020. And a few years from now, probably around 2025 or so, I would say that there is a really high chance that all major smartphone manufacturers will have a foldable slash a convertible version of their phone around that time. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple, for example, ends up merging the iPhone and the iPad into a single device again around 2025 or so. Like really, aside from the hinge and the display, the only other issue with foldable phones is the software. It's not easy making a UI that automatically scales and switches from a smartphone mode to tablet mode. And then keep in mind that you also need to have a new API so that third-party apps can also implement this and switch and scale automatically depending on the form factor that you use. So it's definitely not easy. Also, cold temperatures uh, are said to be affecting these displays. Apple is actually working on a foldable phone that has a heating function that would heat up the display when it's in a cold temperature uh, in order to prevent any damage. Apple has also been in talks with Corning, the manufacturer of Gorilla Glass, in order to make a full glass display that folds. And I'm not talking about the one that Samsung uses on the Z Flip, I'm talking about a full glass display with no plastic layer or anything on top of it. So yeah, it seems like Apple would indeed be uh, probably the last smartphone manufacturer to release a foldable smartphone, but hey, that's usually what they do. They usually wait until others release something in order for them to perfect that technology and, uh, you know, release it afterwards. But yeah, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about foldable phones in 2020 and the future as well? Would you consider buying one? I'm personally really, really excited for foldable phones. Uh, I've never actually had one, by the way. I've seen a few in person, but I haven't actually um, had one for myself. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Galaxy Fold 2. If that's good, if it has a larger outer display, then I might actually consider buying one and using that as a daily driver. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see such a video, maybe. And if you want to support the channel and videos like this one, definitely consider becoming a member. For just 0 0.99 pounds a month, which is actually less than a cup of coffee per month, uh, you support the channel and you also get access to those really cool badges that evolved the longer you've been a member for. And everyone can see the badges. You can see them, uh, all the viewers can also see them and I can see them as well. Definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you're notified whenever a brand new video comes out. So yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, this is pretty much it for this video. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Is that a fact? Signing out.